sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear stuck in the sand. Someone has left a spear. Go back an hour. See what the mouse god saw. Two slopes brilliantly lit, double the width of Troy, divided by a strip 30 yards wide. The gentler, longer slope that leads via its ridge onto the Trojan plain is occupied by 50,000 Greeks, silent behind their masks, yearning to fight, but not until... Now! Now! Hector emerges and commits the Ilian host, their coffin-topped rhinoceros and oxide shields, packing the counterslope. And presently, the Skian gate is closed. Out on the Panachaean right, some cross-slope skirmishing. The Trojan center has begun to edge onto the strip. The ridge. King Agamemnon views Troy's skyline. Windmills. Palms. It will be hours by dark. Not far from him. Concerned that in this final action, those they lead should fight and fight and fight again. The hero lords. Nestor. His evening star. His silent fortress, Ajax. Good, even on soft sand. Odysseus. You know him. Small, but big. Fourth, grizzled and hook tap nosed the king of Crete, Idomeneo, who, come on, would sign a five-war contract on the nod. The gate still closed. Across the strip, Lord Panda spots a Greek called Quist. And says, watch this, to his admirer Biblock, as he beckons up his oriental bow. Then a shield hid Quist. Biblock, my father manufactures chariots. I have a dozen lovely things. I cannot bear to lose my horses in this war. No mind, my motto is start the day well. An early kill, it gets one in the mood. You know it was my shot that saved the war. I know it, Panda, yes. However, Biblock mood, important though it is, is tapping his temple. Worthless minus brains. The armies hum as power station outflow cables do. The Trojans edge. The light goes upright through the sky. Down slope. Child Diomed to those who follow him. Still, still. The king. I know Prince Hector. We will strike when, as he always does, he stops to incite his host. Odysseus and Bombax have gone down slope center to their Ithacans. The Trojans jeer. No fight! And Edge. The child. Still, still. Biblock, my eyes are alpha. But what your brain takes from your sight before it tells your biceps what to do is key. When the fighting starts, you stick by me. See brain work work, not what the stars foretell. Which was, unluckily, what Biblock did. Hold on. There is that Greek. And there was Quist. 
To the sigh of the string, see pandas shot float off. To the slap of the string on the stave, float, float on. on. Over the strip for a beat, a beat. And then carry a tunnel the width of a lipstick through Quist's neck. The ski and gate swings up. Nothing will happen until Hector exits. There is a touch of thunder in the west. He does. Odysseus. Thank God! And about time, too! And, save for the edges on along the strip, Prince Hector's thousands turn, then genuflect, then whisper. Now, now, now. Go close. Besides his helmet and his loincloth, Hector wore a battle skirt of silver mesh. Its band, a needlepoint procession, Sangarian tigers, each with a lifted paw. The gate swings down. On either forearm, as on either shin, lightweight self-sprung wraparound guards, decked with a slash of yellow chrome without, dotted with silver knots and stars within. And now, as he moves through the light downwards along the counter slope, his shield, whose rim ceramic fold will shatter bronze, whose sixteen alternating gold and silver radiance burst from an adamant Medusa Aphrodite boss. Its hair blue font with venomous eels. The pupils of its bullet starred glass eyes. Catching the sun. Catching the sun. Calabric, Aeneas, and Anaxipal. Quiver, Gekeon, Akapract, and Paul, cantering their chariots to the right of his. His silver mittens up. A perfect fit. They go with everything. Sarpedon, Grey, Barbara, Hanyard, Abbasy, his favorite brother, cantering their chariots to his left. Still. Still. Ludi, his nephew. This day's driver. Fast and safe. Catching his eye, flicking the horses on, on either side of him beating their spears against their coffin tops. His army parts. And now the Lord of Light filled Hector's voice. Him moving on, on, forwards, down, towards the strip with certainty. And descant to his thousands. Now! 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 now. 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 That cool, clear voice rose like an arrow through the air. Are you ready to fight? We are! On hearing this, to welcome Hector to his death, God sent a rolling thunderclap across the sky, the city, and the sea, and momentarily, the breezes played with the sunlit dust. On either slope, a silence fell. Think of a raked sky-wide Venetian blind. Add the receding traction of its slats, of its slats, of its slats, as a hand draws it up. Hear the Greek army getting to its feet. Then of a stadium. When many boards are raised... And many faces change to one vast face. So, where there were so many masks... Now one Greek mask glittered from strip to ridge. Already swift, Boy Ludi took Prince Hector's nod and fired his whip that right and left signaled to Ilium's wheels to fire their own and to the wall-wide nodding plumes of Trojan infantry. Screeching above the grave percussion of their feet. Shouting how they will force the savage Greeks. Back up the slope, over the ridge, down plain, and slaughter them beside their ships. Add the reverberation of their hooves. And reach for your oars! To Lesbiax, his yard at 60 degrees, sending it across the radiant air as Ilium swept onto the strip, into the Greeks. Over the venue where two hours ago all present prayed for peace. And carried Greece back up the slope that leads via its ridge. Onto the windy plain. Dispersed across its middle left. Extended lines of shields collide. 
totter apart, shuffle back, shouting in their ankle dust, turning from lines to crescents, crescents to shorter lines, backstepping into circles, or parties just wandering about aimlessly. And through their intervals... Now moving, pausing now, now moving on. His court, their comet's tail of wheel dust close behind, swift through the gorgeous light, Ludion reigns, Lord of the Chariots. Hector's chariot goes racing across the left, but seen... As the Mouse God wants him to be seen. As everywhere at once. Right now, near Hyacinth, the son of Hyacinth, a Greek able to quarry slate, throw a fair pot... And decorate it. He chose to follow Agamemnon. Still up ridge, still sane. Hours by dark. While Hyacinth stood alone in the dispersal, all... By Hector's speed, by Hector's light, as Hector jumped his sword... That caught the light. ...into his other hand leant out across the Troy side wheel, and wishing him the very best of luck, decapitated Hyacinth as they passed on. Out, far left, you turn beside Sarpedon, saying, Dear Intrepidity, mark time until I tell Telespiax to signal the advance. Nodded to Grey, to Barbara, told Paul, the dearest of his court, to strip the headless Greek and take his bronzeware back to Troy. Which Paul part did. Then waved to them as Ludi cracked his pair along the track that runs, parallel to the strip, towards the middle of the slope. Go there. The situation is unpromising. Spanning the track, some halfway up between the ridge, the strip, fenced in behind their shields, 2,000 masks around Odysseus. Surrounding them, Lord Abbasy with more. And over there, coming down track towards those roundabouts, Hector and Ludi's dust. See Coriant and Shell, Ithacan hunters bred on Mount Neritus. Some said bare-chested Artemis, god of all animals bar us, had taught these brothers how to ride and shoot. She did not help them now. Running the horses off their chariot shaft, they galloped, leapt the shields, and bomb backs. No! Knees in, bows up straight at the coffin tops. I never saw Lord Hector sign between, or Ludi swerve off track and put, now at full height gauging his cast, his shield sweeping shells bow shot wide, his prince exactly where he asked. Who cast and, oh my God. as Hector's spear entered shells abdomen, the arrow's ricochet hit Coriot in the eye, and off he came and died. As shell, screaming, was bolted by his frightened horse into the Trojan coffin tops, where, axe up, Abbasi's minder dial. With the sound that a butcher's chopper makes. As it goes through a carcass into his block. Finished him off. Long afterwards, it was recalled that Sheepgrove, Ithaca's adopted son, made sure that Shell and Coriot's parents got the ashes of their twins, their only sons. Therefore, their high-roofed house above its winding wall of rock in distant Ithaca went to a farming ant. While Paul, lost to the fame combat alone can bring, ignored again Hector's, returned the bodies of those two, told Meep his man to see to it, and followed Hector back along the slope. Headlock! Body slam! Hands that do not reach back! Low dust! Stormed by Calabric, driven in by Abbasy, the light above his circle hatched with spears, Odysseus to Sheepgrove. Get Lord Adamineo from the ridge. Then praise. Brainchild Athena, holy girl, as one you made as calm and cool as water and well. I know that you have cares enough other than those of me and mine. Yet, daughter of God, without your help, we cannot last. Setting down her topaz saucer heaped with nectarine jelly, Emptying her blood-red mouth set in her ice-white face, teenage Athena jumped up and shrieked, Kill! Kill for me! Better to die than to live without killing! Who says prayer does no good? Seeing Athena's cry raise fight and fire in Lord Odysseus, Hera, heaven's creamy queen, told Diomed... Still near the strip, content amid the crackle of snapped spears. Odysseus needs you. Go. Beneath her eyes, 300 paces down slope from Calabric and Abbasy, a party of 500 wandering Greeks see Hector parked and pray. Lord of Light. While Ludi fills a bucket from the well where the ski and road that runs from Troy straight up the slope to the ridge crosses the track. I shall be busy until dark. If I forget you, do not you, 
Me. Out from the Wanderers, the Tusser boys. Iolo, sixteen, from a wife, and Parthenos. Bred from a she Tusser inherited. Come crotch down hurry, convinced that this, their chance for fame, Prince Hector dead, etc., has come. Parthenos set to plant a spear by Hector's spine. Iolo? Well? Boy Ludi is astonished at their impudence. But not enough to not, in one, put down the bucket, thrash his whip. It's it, crack, recalling Hector to his fate. It's tip. As Parthenos jumped for the ter chariot's tailgate, and Hector's mitten hand snaffles his wispy beard. Circling Iolo's wrist. Parthenos kisses Hector's wrist. His eyes are full of words. Take a deep breath before you speak, Greek boy. He does. Please, Prince of the Gate, take us alive. We did not want to come to Troy. We could not disobey our father's words. His mother was your aunt Hesione. He has a wall of swords with silver hilts, Iolo says. And gold, a chest of gold. Please, 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 please. The wanderers edge in. Hector steps down. The Tucer boys may not have been the brightest on the slope, but they are bright enough to know death when they see it. Keep your lives, he said. A gift from Troy. And as they ran, made go to Ludi with his head, studied the wanderers, lifted the bucket, doused himself, and charged. See an East African lion. Nose tip to tail tuft ten, eleven feet. Slouching towards you. Swaying its head from side to side. Doubling its pace, its gold black mane that stretches down its belly to its groin. Catching the sunlight as it hits twice its own length, a beat, then leaps. Great forepaws high, great claws disclosed. The scarlet insides of its mouth. Parting a roar as loud as sail-sized flames. And lands, slams, scattering the herd. That is how Hector came on us. Despite the few who ran out from the rest to get at him and died, or ducked and dodged his restless spear and came away covered with blood and died. Like shoppers trapped by a calamity. The rest pressed back onto the rest. And he, partly to please his comet's tail, took sideways jumps, one foot up to the other in the air, chattering his spears along their front. The ridge. Sheepgrove has asked. And Domineo does not wait. Dustlight. Far off, a woman with an infant on her back is picking fruit. Enter the child. Be advised, if you cannot give death the two-finger flip, do not fight by or against Queen Hera's human, the son of Tydeus, murderous Diomed, a.k.a. the child. Tall, blonde, with a huge nose and lots of corkscrew curls, followed as he springs off his chariot's plate by fifty masks, and tells the wanderers, Asephanos, his heart, his next, springs down. Your Lord has come! Shoulders his way towards their front. Honor him with your lives! Steps through. Ave! Sees Hector far down front. Sees Paul, his custom chariot with meep on reins, arriving with the comet's tail. Paul was a kind, religious man, loving his prince and loved by him. Most days in pre-war days saw many guests around Paltz Pool, but now... At 45, seeking the fame combat alone can bring, he chose to fight. Some said that God who recognizes hospitality would save his worshiper, but no. As Paul and Meep tried to jump down, too far to stop it, Hector saw the child, who did not break his stride... Or seemed to notice them especially. ...reverse his spear, bash out Meep's eyes, then re-reversing, plunge, mid-jump with sword part drawn, its 18-inch bronze tooth that caught the light. into Paul's side. And as pre-mechanized harvesters their sheaves pitch him in dreadful pain sideways across his pair into the dust at Hector's feet. Blind as the cyclops with fraternal tears, Prince Hector prayed. God, stifle my grief and bless my plan. Which is 
to pull Odysseus' thousands, and now Diomed, onto himself, and hold them there, while signaling the left and right wings of the slope. Sarpedon's Lycians, Aeneas Dardanos. To advance, turn inwards, meet, and so divide the mid-slope from the ridge-line Greeks. Then stopped, and put the child between himself... And popped, now on his hands and knees, holding the slick blue-greenish loops of his intestines up, though some were dragging in the dust. Diomed telling Sephanos, Finish him! Then strip that showcase plate! Taking a step towards Hector, who moved back as Paul choked out. Friend! I am gone! I begged you not to leave the thing I was as dog meat for the Greeks! This, as Sephanos unlatched and jerked his blood-smeared urn off, while those behind the child jeered, Troy on a drift! As kind Paul died. And Hector, dogged by Diomed, hovered some paces off, hearing him shout, seeing his masks begin to butcher Paul. Prince, by the light of Troy alight, our herd will share what we Greek heroes left. Yes! Yes! Who else can stop it if Hector, the irreplaceable Trojan, lacks the guts to guard the body of his friend? Silence that liar with a single blow. Was Hector's thought. Though to Calabric and Abyssy, he said. Fall back three spear casts to the rise above the well. From time to time, here on the agricultural and poppy-dotted districts of the right-hand slope Aeneas' thousands occupy, his lords, lighting each other's pipes beside their wheels, reckon the battle has, as battles do, found its own voice, that presently far off, lends with the sound of clear bright water as it falls over their covert's mossy heights, a peaceful, dust-free place circled by poplar trees, good cover and green shade. Aeneas often sits apart. He has his mother's face, white skin, green eyes, a slow, unbroken look. And though there is a touch too much of satisfaction in his confidence, as with the prince, your eyes incline to him. Ah! Standing. Ludi! Sending for Panda and Achates. Sire! Move when you hear Telespiax advance! And he was gone. Slope center. Hear the child shouting the shouts of an heroic lord. Strike for the face! The seat of the soul! Beseeching Hera as he ran. That queen so happy for herself and him. Blessed sister wife of God. Give me the might and courage to become the killer of the day. The masks behind him baying. Troy for us! Her power surging through him. He cast as he leapt at them. Barbecued three, crashed through their coffin tops, gaffed this plume dead, cut fillets out of those, his masks behind him through the gap, him making for the rise topped by Prince Hector's vulture plume. Consider how, when sought, the cliffhead whales that frequent the sunlit radius of Antarctica tail down beneath its fields of rustling ice, then thirty minutes later raise their rainbow spouts above a far lagoon. So Hector trapped the child who made no mind S-curving through these Trojans, hammering those, as many arrows on his posy shield as microphones on politicians' stands. I fight my heart out! Fight your heart out, Prince! Dust, like dry ice around their feet. As Hector draws away onto and up the rise above the well, three spear casts now above the Skian road, beside him, Abyssy, Calabric, Telespiax. Swish go their 18 inches, Swish. Behind Telespiax, Boran, his instrumentalists, their silver-cuffed black ox, ox horns poised, 
The child is almost up to them. Front for a family of thieves! No fouler being than a treacherous guest! His mask slipping and slithering up the bloodstained rise. Who needs Achilles now? Calls Declan. An eight-foot maceman from Arcadia. Within a long jump of the prince, who, sweeping his spear detector-wise, put Declan between the child and himself, finessed his sweep into an upwards thrust. Nice one! That Declan. Who saw himself once home beneath a tree, a drink in hand, describing Troy, its wonders and its wealth. Took on his nose guard's bridge. Well manufactured as the helmet was, the spear point penetrated Declan's skull and spurts of blood and bits of brain came through its tortoise holes. And as the maceman's ghost stumped off... Diamond? Yes! Watched for a chance to send the prince, Gondeklin's body weighing down his spear, into oblivion. Yes! As hooking his posy shield onto a finger of his spear arm's hand, Hector signed, advance to Boron and... Patience now. Raising their ox horns to their lips, the trio sent a long, deep, even note over that dreadful world. So otherwise it brought a pause. And in that pause... From either outskirt of the slope, the masses at its center saw bronze beams tanning the dusty sky and heard... The child still eyeing Hector, Hector still stuck with Declan on his sphere. Aeneas and Sarpedon's multitudes... Wait for it. Cheering far off as they advanced... He is bound to throw his throat! Then... Yes! As Declan slid off... As child, you took the breath to power your cast. He did. And Lord Adomineo's fingers ringed your wrist. And Lord Odysseus, thwarting Hector's plan, said... Who gives a toss what Lord Odysseus said? You said, offing the Cretan scrip. Kill! And aimed your spear. My kill! Hop stumbling forwards, watching it arc. And I will you. Not your day, Dio. Not your day. Jump from Aeneas right. Hooves thundering in the dust. Cool heart boy Ludi turned his bodice and his pair into the flight path of your spear, which pierced that urn. They knocked him black back flat, out of the car, onto the sand, further from Hector than from you, longing to kill the boy, crying, die, die, among the depth of cries, Adomineo getting in your way, friendly as we go tight, Odysseus. King, come to the ridge. Hector has pulled you, plus a third of us. And I shall kill him as he pulls. Odysseus, that smile of his. And then? Still far, yet louder now. The outskirts cheer, the outskirts dust. Sethanos says, Son of Tydeus, go or stay. I am your next. If you die, I die. Choose. He hates to. He is loyal. They have gone. And Hector's plan, albeit he got his looty back, is gone. Host must fight host. And to amuse the Lord our God. Man, slaughter man.
in the beginning. There was no beginning. And in the end, no end. The sea. The city on its eminence. The snow. And where King Agamemnon drew his sword, and all Greece drew soon after seven today, flat, broad, declining stripwards, and double the width of Troy, the ridge. King Agamemnon sees Mount Ida's vines, and that is all that he or Greece can see. Save for a coast of sunlit dust, traveling up slope. Miss Heber's Diary, 1908, mid-June. We made our way through rain so thick the midday light was as at home at dusk. Then suddenly the downpour ceased, and there, a thousand yards across, silent before our feet, the great gold-glittering Limpopo swept toward its falls. So Greece saw Troy exit its dust. But heroes are not frightened by appearances. Ave, we called. Our banners rising one by one, one after one, accepting their advance. Our kings delighting you, dear lord and master of the widespread, widespread sky, with battle cries. Your cry, strike now, as one, and you will win. Our cry, as we, urns close, our masks like ripples on a lake, lowered our spearheads and prepared to fight. Troy, silent. Slow, the dust wreathing up lazily behind their coffin tops. Agamemnon, Menelaus, Odysseus, Paul, Nestor, Diomed, Ajax, Crete, and those who follow them, what? Sarpedon, Grey, Calabric, Aeneas, Abbasi, the, the Prince. This is the moment when you understand that there is nothing in between you and the enemy. Too soon you may be lying one life less, seeing the past, or standing over someone you have known since childhood, or never known. beseeching you to finish them, or on the run, or one of those who blindfold those who run, or one of those who learn to love it all. The Prince, glancing towards Telespiax. Forgotten kings, put down your arms, run to your ships, launch them by dark, or I will turn them into firewood. And, and as he said so, Atreus shouted, God for Greece! Floated the opening spear. All in a moment on Telespiak's note, 10,000 javelins rose into the air, catching the light, but shadowing the ground that lay between the enemies. As Greece, masks down, points down, in body paint, in bronze, beating their shields to trumpet drums and stuck hoop tambourines, advanced onto that ground, while on Telespiak's second note, Protector's line of shield fronts opened up. As Greece increased its pace. Still at their balaclavas, led by Hux. Who gave a farm the size of Texas for Cassandra. Fitted their scaffold pipe heads into Greece. As Greece, Ave, now at a run, came on through knee-deep dust beneath. Flight after flight from Tucer's upridge archers as Slope shields! Slope shields! The Trojan lords shout to their ranks and take the shock. Think of the moment when, far from the land molested by a mile a minute wind, the ocean starts to roll, then rear, then roar over itself in rank on rank of waves. Their sides so steep, their smoky crests so high. 300,000 plunging tons of aircraft carrier dare not sport its beam. But Troy afraid, yet more afraid. Lest any lord of theirs should notice any one of them flinching behind his mask. Has no alternative. Just as those waves, grown closer as they mount the continental shelf, lift it to breakers, scoop the blue, and then smother the glistening shingle. Such is the fury of the Greeks, that as the armies joined, no Trojan lord or less can hold his ground. And hapless as plane crash bodies tossed ashore, still belted in their seats, are thrust down slope. Slip into the fighting. Into a low sky sight. Crammed with huge men, half-naked men, brave, 
Loyal, fit, slab-sided men. Men who came face to face with gods, who spoke with gods, leaping onto each other like bulls, screaming, kicking, slicing, hacking, ripping, thumping their chests. I am full of the god! Blubbering with terror as they begged for their lives. Laid his trunk open from shoulder to hip like a beauty queen sash. Falling. Falling. Top slung steel chain gate slumped onto concrete. Pipco, Blue Fisher, Chucker Buddy, Lux. Left all he had to follow Greece. Left all he had to follow Troy. Clawing the ground, calling out for their sons for revenge. Go left along the ridge. Beneath, Greek chariots at speed, their upcurled dust. Go low along the battle sea, its suddenly upangled masks. Heading 2,000 Greeks, Thole of Caledon. A spear in one, a banner in his other hand. Has pinched Sarpedon's lichens in a loop. Drop into it. Noise so clamorous, it sucks. You rush your pressed flower hackles out to the perimeter. And here it comes. That unpremeditated joy as you... The oozy shuddering warm against your hip. Happy in danger in a dangerous place. Yourself, another self you found in Troy. Squeeze nickel through that rush of Greekoid scum. Oh, wonderful. Most wonderful. And then again, more wonderful. A bond no word or lack of words can break. Love above love. And here they come again. The noble Greeks. I know. A spear in one, a banner in his other hand. Your life at every instant up for... Gone. And candidly, who gives a toss? Your heart beats strong. Your spirit grips. King Richard calling for another horse. His fifth. King Marshal Ney shattering his saber on a cannonball. King Ivan Kursk. 2230 hours. July 4th to 14th, 43. 7,000 tanks engaged. He clambered up and pushed a stable bolt into that tiger tank's red-hot machine gun's mouth and bit the bastard up. Wally! Where would we be if he had lost? Back to today. At the loop's midpoint in the rising dust. Continual drifts of arrow shafts and stones lessening their light. The kings of Lycia. Sarpedon, Grey, Hanyat, and Axapot. Silent and sorrowful. And queuing to that point. Lord Hanyat's followers raising their voices in farewell, each carrying, unasked, though under fire, the biggest stone that he can lift. Oh, we have lost him. Oh, we have lost him. Then placing it onto the camp, those first in line have raised over their king, Lord Hanyat's father, Barbara, who fell with honor where he fell seven times hit, dust in his curls, far from his home in Aphrodisias yet would not give a finger's length of Hector's ridge to Greece. Hector himself joining the queue, adding his stone to theirs, taking Sarpedon's hand in his, shouting above the noise, When I have finished with the Greeks, Lord Hanyat shall have Crete. Don't let me keep you then. But he has gone. Ludion reigns across the battle's back. Hay and manure, some pools of blood. They look towards the center of the ridge. It's dust, like trees. Aeneas says... Delay! The day depends on you! Hector! On God! Lock on to them. Exhaust them. Hope they charge. Oh, but they do! The mid-ridge fighting is so intermixed. It's thousands he Then rear. And then... Collapse back onto themselves, but cannot part. Hector is everywhere. The army king, now moving. Pausing now, now moving on. The big bridge of his shoulders everywhere. His mittens flickering in the dusty light. His vulture plume, the tallest plume. The plume that says, Hector is here for anyone at any time to find and fight to death. As he hacks his way on foot towards Calabria. Drums in the dust inside its mid-ridge overcast. Flags tossing above agitated forms. Calabria, holding the center firm. Blurred bronze. Blood? Blood, like a car wash. Each time Greece drew its breath and smashed. And smashed they came, and smashed they came, and smashed, and smashed their eights into the line of coffin tops. Across the half-shield-high eye-tingling dust, Prince Hector's voice reached right, reached left. And in them both, both heart and voices raised, that reached and raised in turn Calabric's hearts. 
collaborate calling. Greece! Is this the best that you can do? Try harder, Greece! Oh, oh but, but they, they do. do! Bow your head. Beg for your life. Death without bearing. And there, as if... Inside a moonlit sandstorm, God allow the columns of Palmyra's speech. The Greeks encouraging their host. I am here. I will help. Stand still and fight. At any moment, they will break. Though they do not. Greece! Are you frightened? Why come so far to die? And unbelievably feeling the cobbles of the ski and road beneath his feet. And still, as one sits upright from a dream in which he drowned and reaches for the light. Troy reached into itself and found new strength, though Greece. Like a pedestrian who thinks, after this hill, downhill, then from its top sees yet another hill. Troy kept coming. Though some who looked our way would sigh for us. Back from the dust in quarter light. Masks up, bronze off, arms up, water dashed round. Happy to see each other through the dust. Kikion at his father's side. Calabric shouts to Hector. Even if I say so, which I do, our center holds. A nod. But it is not enough to lock, exhaust them. They must be driven back. And only you can make us do it. Only you. above a herd. Hands wielding broken spear poles rise through ice-hot twilight, flecked with points. And where you end, and where the dust begins, or if it is the dust or men that move, and whether they are Greek or Trojan, well, only this much is certain. When a lull comes, they do. you hear the whole ridge coughing. There's Bubblegum! He's out to make his name! He's charging us! He's prancing! Get that leap! He's in the air! Bubblegum's in the air! Above the dust! He's lying on the sunshine in the air! Seeing the wall! The arrows keep him up! Cock! Cock! Ole! He's wiggling in the air! They're having fun with him! He's seeing something! Bubblegum's last words! He's, He's down. down! He's in the dust! Bubblegum's in the dust! They're stripping him! They're stripping Bubblegum! Close! Close! You can't see anything! His mother saw her dogs to buy his place! You can't see who to kill! Sunlight, like lamplight. Brown clouds of dust touch those brown clouds of dust already overhead. And snuffling through the blood and filth-stained legs of those still-standing thousands goes Nasty, their sighty's little dog, now licking this, now tasting that. Nestor, his son Antilochus standing beside him. Beloved friends, this stasis is God's work, and it is blasphemous to win when he says wait. Hector is on his knees. Bringer of daylight, Lord of mice and light, help me to drive the Greeks into the sea. On Agamemnon's right, the child. Due to put on ten years and lose ten pounds this afternoon. We are Greek! 
We are brave! Add your strength to mine! Has Lord Apollo answered Hector's prayer? Believe you are handsome, you are loved. Earth's secret of hope and possibility. A new, a rapt, dangerous truth. But no man can do everything alone. See out. See out. voice. You are magnificent! Magnificent! From Thrace, from Bosphorus, from Anatolium, from Karen Lycia, from Frigiland, Cyprus and Sibi, Samothrace and Kos. Magnificent! My heroes and my host of Ilium, now let us finish with the Greeks and drive them off this ridge that they pollute and chase them down the plain that they have scorched and into the commander they have soured and slaughtered them beside their bloated ships. Founded by heaven, founded in heaven, you of the never taken gate to Asia, holy Troy, rouse your brave hearts. Do as I do, do as I say, kill Greece. The victory is God's. The victory! As with a downward sweep of his arm, Boy Louis lashed their pair. Is God! And from his prince, his lord, his love, Hector of Troy, Telespiax trumpeting. The victory! With fifty chariots on either side and running by their wheels, all answering his. Is God! Is God! His mass followed him through the swaths of hanging dust. Sparks from the bronze, lit splinters from the poles. I am hit. Take my arm. I am dying. Shake my hand. Do not go. Goodbye, little fellow with the gloomy face. As Greece, as Troy, fought on. And on. Or are they only asleep? They are too tired to sleep. The tears are falling from their eyes. The noise they make while fighting is so loud that what you see is like a silent film. And as the dust converges over them, the ridge is as it is when darkness falls. Who is it sees, set in the North Aegean Sea? 
their coasts. Nosegays of seaweed, toasting Ida snow. The Isles of Imbros and of Samothrace. And over there, grapes, ghosts, and vocal grottoes. Greece. Above it, Macedon. Its wooded folds declining till they meet those of Carpathia at the Cave of Gorge. Through which, fed by a hundred tributaries since it crossed the northern instep. Mm-hmm. 